Hello, everyone. So today is our fifth episode of our little random podcast thing. And today we have David and Ellie. And today we're going to be talking about kind of our expectations of college. And I guess like, you know, expectations versus reality. What actually happened once we got into college? So I guess first and foremost, um, kind of just to start it all off, David and Ellie, for both of you guys, what was your expectations of college? Like when you guys were seniors in high school or just in high school in general, what did you think college was going to be like? David, do you want to know? Ellie, you go first. Oh. What? <laughs> Christian, what about you go first? <laughs> yes. I'll go first then. Um, I think, okay, so for me at least, I'm the oldest child in my family, right? So uh, I've never really had the idea of knowing what college was going to be like. And even though my parents did go to college in the U.S., it was such a long time ago, like I wouldn't have known what the experience was like. So I think a lot of my influence really just came from what I heard from my friends. Or what I heard from like, like, you know, TV and media. Like, I think that was a big thing too. Like they tell you college is like all those bunch of parties. You have all those like tailgates because of football games. Um, you know, school is one thing. But I think from a lot of the times when I was listening to people, they were like, oh, college is, is way easier than high school. Like, you know, the studies aren't that bad. Um, you know, you don't really have to do as much. There's no homework. You're just studying. You have so much free time. And I was like, it sounds great. And then I realized... I never really asked anyone who was going into STEM what college was like. I asked all my STEM student friends, uh, like my non-STEM friends, like, oh, what was college like for you? And they were like, oh, yeah, you can go to parties every week. You can do this, do this, and that. So I was like, I was thinking that college was going to be easy. And obviously, we'll talk about what happened once I got into college. But they, I was told it wasn't, it was like, because you get more liberty in college than high school. I think that was also the biggest thing I was looking for, like kind of leading my own life, being my own individual. So... At least that was kind of my general expectations of it. Okay, let's just single out David. David looks ready to go. So I had a very similar expectation to you, Christian, where I know in high school, since, yeah, I'm also the oldest. So the only thing that I based, off, my, based my expectations on was what I heard in high school from my high school teachers. So compared to you guys, my school is more laid back and my teachers were as well so a lot of them were like oh yeah college is so fun you have to because you're given so much free time and with all this time you have to go find a job and remember c's get degrees don't worry <laughs> as long as you graduate you'll be fine oh my god so then i had this mentality going into college i was like yes my goal is to have fun these four years I want to, you know, eat late, like eat out with friends, go to parties, and then, you know, like in high school, procrastinate and hopefully turn out well like in high school. But then, of course, when we all came to college, I didn't realize that what they were talking about, how C's de get degrees, doesn't apply to a lot of these, like pre-med, pre-law, and then just pre-dent and just STEM majors in general, because to get into grad school, you need good grades, but it didn't hit me at that moment until second semester of freshman year. So yeah, that was my expectations. All right, nice, nice. What about you, Ali? My expectations were a little more different because I have an, old, an older brother who's four, four years older and like, I mean, we're not that close, but I, I see him in college and stuff kind of, seemed pretty chill but I didn't really expect a lot from college I'd say I think probably because like from Arcadia High School we had like a lot of pressures and stuff to do well and I already had it in me to be like academically driven or like I didn't know how not to be and also in a way UCSD is a pretty academically driven school <laughs> in general like most of the people I know are in STEM fields and stuff, but I guess expectation-wise, movies and stuff portray it as really laid back, and I don't know if I'd really say that college is actually that laid back. <laughs> it just depends on what major you're in and what field you want to go into and what your plans are after undergrad, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just... Because I think it's like you, it doesn't hit you how much college is really like until you get there. Um, mm -hmm. And like we said, it's just like it's so dependent on so many factors, like your major, 
what you want to do with your life. Like, cause some kids are like, oh, I want to go, like David said, you want to do pre-med. But if you're going to do pre-med, you kind of have to like be that one yeah. kid that goes all gung-ho during college and like actually get all the good grades. So it's, mm-hmm. it's like a whole nother world. I guess we can kind of start off. Uh, I got another question is, you know, you could, you have these expectations and probably there's some that we've missed out on or whatnot, didn't mention, but what do you think was the biggest shock that you had once you got into college? Like once you got into college, what was the biggest thing that you did not expect was going to happen? It's a tough one. Mm. Like, what do you think was, like, I guess I can go first. Like, I guess for me, the biggest surprise I had once I got into college was kind of this idea that it seemed like I had so much more time because like, you know how like you can choose your own schedule, right? Like, because I had, I wasn't taking like, as it wasn't like a specific schedule, like eight to three every day. Like maybe some days I only have two classes and some days I only have three. But the fact that like, mm-hmm. I technically in theory had more time, but less time to actually do things. Like, even though it felt like my day yeah. had so much more I could have done, it didn't feel like that. Like, for example, high, high school, go to school at eight, come home at three, maybe an extra curriculum that ends until five, then I'm doing homework the rest of the yeah. night, 12 a.m. probably at the latest, I'll go to sleep. In college, it's like, sometimes I'll be done with class by 11 a.m., but I'm up until like two or three in the morning, and I have no idea why. It's not because I'm really procrastinating, per se, but I feel like there's just so many things that, I didn't expect, like, kind of, like, side tasks that we have to do because we're a lot mm-hmm. more independent. But what do you, you mean by side cool. tasks? Like, whether it's just trying to remember to eat or, like, having to go pick something <laughs> up really fast. Like, like, oh, shoot, I have to go get, uh, like, I don't know, clothespin hangers or something like that. Like, something, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not exactly that. But, like, I have to go pick up something really quickly. Or, oh, I have to go take care of errands. Because I think in college, I ended up getting more of my own, like, individual chores and tasks that I had to take care of yeah. uh, that I didn't realize. That like at home, maybe things were already taken care of for me or because it was my schedule was so structured and ordered, I knew Mm -hmm. how much time I really had. So by the time I got into college, it was like, hmm, I forgot to go drop off or check my mailbox or something like that. Like, it's just like you do Mm -hmm. these tasks and all of a sudden, it seems like you have less time to actually do things or even balancing organizations and homework and studying. For some reason, I would say up until like two or three when it wasn't that I was, you know, procrastinating per se, it was just because, huh. I really had a lot of things to do today. Yeah. I think coming from like an Asian household where a lot of the times your parents are there to like nurture you and take care of all these like side things, like like personally for me at home in high school, I didn't do my own laundry and like I didn't have to wash the dishes and that kind of thing. Like all these little side tasks, they accumulate. And like when you're in college, you're like, Oh, I actually like these things don't seem that bad when you add them up though on top of like the readings you have to do for like some class or whatever it really adds up and also I feel like when there are less class times you see like your schedule in college it becomes like smaller chunks but like compared to your average like eight in the morning to like three in the afternoon schedule in high school in high school you get like breaks in between and like they schedule in lunch and when you're in college you have to schedule in your own meal times and when you have like a class that goes from like say 11 a.m to like 1 30 what are you gonna eat and if you like schedule something at two you're just gonna like pick up some fast food or whatever like the fastest meal you can get like and just like even though it's it seems like you have more extra time like walking to classes and like all these things take time that you don't realize and I realized that in college these lectures even though they're 50 minutes some of my professors have managed to pack in so much information within the 50 minutes so you're just trying to like retain information during that time in high school you get like 50 something minutes with a teacher they give you half the time to like do some work or like a quarter of the time to do some work like most of the time when you're doing work you have to use your own time in college to do those works and like that kind of thing and I think that's what makes like the college schedule seem easier but actually not yeah yeah, to go off what Ellie was saying, 
Yeah, when it comes to classes, even though like where you're saying it might be like only 50 minutes or two hours, it's just how much information you have is like packed within each of those hours. And then even after that, how much you are expected to study will be way past the amount of time you are actually in class. Like for chemistry, I remember studying like during second semester, I'll go to the library and this is only after one week. So three hours of chemistry, I'll be studying like six, seven hours of chemistry in the library and that's only one subject. So then the amount of time just focusing on the materials for a specific class definitely like exceeds the amount of time we were studying in high school. Because in high school, it was like, they're all split off into nice, even little chunks or you study a little bit of this during the day and then you're good. The next day you learn a little bit more and then you study that and that'll maybe take, I don't know, 45 minutes for each one and then you'll be good. Yeah, I mean, you guys make a really good point because I never really thought about how much was condensed into a small class period. It's like you start off thinking the first week, like, oh, it'll be still this week. And already you're like learning stuff. And I'm like, all right, hold on. You lost me after hydrogen. Like, um, it, oh, yeah. they, they, it picks up <laughs> so fast. Like, I did not expect that. And I think going off really fast because Ellie, you mentioned finding time to eat or like what you have to eat. There, like second semester, every Monday, I only had one meal that day. And not because I was trying to purposely starve myself. But because of the way my classes were lined up and everything I had to do, mm -hmm. I remember I wouldn't eat until after my chem lab. And, you know, chem labs were draining. So at yeah. 7 p.m., that's when I'd be like, all right, let's go eat. I, I haven't eaten all day. And I'll be crawling over to the dining hall just to get food. Like, I'll eat so much and everyone's like, wow, you eat a lot. It's like, this is the only meal I've had today. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just the time. I don't even think it's like improper time management. It's just like, it was not what I expected. You kind of learn to grab a banana or like some sandwich and then because at UCSD like walking from class to class or like dorm to a class it takes like 15 minutes sometimes. Mm, yeah. If it's far like 20 something minutes you can you can eat on the way depending on where you're located and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Really at you. All right I think another thing and I don't know how this how it works. Cause, I mean, obviously, David and I, we were both at USC. So it's pretty similar mm -hmm. experience. But kind of this idea of, you know, I think the one thing we, I think all of us can agree that the one thing you hear about college is like parties, like that drinking life. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you, what did you, what do you guys think of that? I mean, okay, let me rephrase. All of us here are below the age of 21 and we don't condone drinking and nor do we claim that we have ever drank in our lives. But what did you guys experience regarding um, you know, like those parties and that kind of lifestyle, like if you had any experience with it. For me, I would say that I was able to experience like, I guess, the party life at USC. And hmm, I guess it was wow. definitely fun hanging out with friends, you know, just relaxing and chill not really caring about anything. And then time really just passes so fast. Mm -hmm. But once again, since being pre-med and a STEM major, you have to sacrifice the time, sacrifice a little bit of time of when you're partying to like studying. So yes, it's fun, but then it takes, it takes up so much time that did there was consequences when it comes to partying and then studying mm -hmm. well, like you sacrifice time from studying just to have fun and in the end it would cost you things whether it be yeah. grades or just sleep so yeah it's fun it's just you have to have a perfect balance between studying and partying I think for me or like do you want to go no, you can go ahead. I don't, I don't really have a much of a party story to tell. <laughs> you can go first. Um, so for me, I guess like expectations going into college, our high school or like the, at least the people I was friends with and like from high school didn't really touch drugs or alcohol much at all. So going into college, we had our like Marshall College orientation and 
they all packed us in an auditorium and it was like, oh, like these are the rules, blah, 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 don't touch anything. But if you do go to a party, make sure you stick together. They had this like little assembly and was like, oh, like leave no one behind. Um, if you don't do go anywhere, make sure you go like leave with the amount of people that you come with, that kind of thing. And then they also had like this, um, what's it called? thing called maps where if someone is actually in like critical danger or something like because of alcohol drugs anything of that sort then you call the number and the people won't get in trouble for whatever like occurred before like safety is the number one priority so when they ushered us in that auditorium and were, were like giving us that assembly i was like isn't that like doesn't that not really make sense because you're telling us not to do things but then you know we're going to you're kind of assuming that we're going to by telling us these things so like at first being around people who were intoxicated or were on anything kind of freaked me out a lot and it was like a big adjustment just because I had never been around anyone who has been like drunk or like used anything yeah and so but afterwards i think i've experienced like some of like the culture more so like i joined like a club and then like let some people who i recognize use things like responsibly and like were safe with the way they were doing things and then i was like able to be comfortable enough to actually like try or something I think the main thing about like all this kind of stuff like drugs and alcohol and all that just be careful stay safe you don't know what's going to happen sometimes like you just don't know what the effects are going to be for your body sometimes do your research know what you're going to getting into and just make sure you're with people who are responsible and being safe about whatever you're doing and like david said um of course to any degree of social life that you engage in it does take away from studying time but it all depends on how you want to separate out your schedule so like for me personally i would go into like a routine of making sure on my weekend if I spent like one day hanging out with friends and I'll use the other day like studying and then making sure like my academics are in order and like that kind of worked out for me but it can be easy for things to go like haywire and like oh midterms are coming and you're you don't know what's going on and aren't caught up so just know when your midterms are know when your finals coming for us bcsd is on a quarter system 10 weeks it comes pretty quickly week three or four midterms are rolling in and then like it goes bam 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 and then the quarter is kind of over so yeah just be wise with your choices <laughs> that's what i'd say yeah. yeah all right i guess for me so this kind of goes back to my expectations like i wasn't that i was going to go out of my way to necessarily party or that i was think i was going to be that kind of party person but I was like, you know, I figured I'm going to USC, not to be a huge party school. I might end up at a party. And, and for the most part, I did. But I've only been to one. And the only one I've been to was because USC was the one that was hosting it. It was like, I don't know if David, if you remember this. It was back in Welcome Week or like the mm -hmm. first week before school started. There was that splash bash where they, yeah, they took us into that one large school. <laughs> it was, it was, no, it was fun. Don't get me wrong. I had fun. Like it was, it was fun just like, my aimlessly jumping around or i don't know that's basically what i figured most um dance party goes like but it was like you know at the same time i was like oh so many like sweaty people around me it's so congested like if i had claustrophobia I, I, I wouldn't have not been fun. that sounds so, like a concert like that's what you think like a concert kind of array but i don't know it was like yeah. they called it a party and that's what they made it seem like so at least that's my perception of it. i don't know i've never been to a real college party i you know i've heard they're over like a lot of my friends will tell me it's overhyped so i think that was the reason why i probably didn't go to it but I think I never went to parties, not because I was afraid I was going to, like, overdrink or because, um, or anything like that. It's just because 
one, I never really had the time. Like we mentioned, we talked about school mm-hmm. a lot. And actually, the first semester of school, I came back home every weekend. So, I mean, I wouldn't even be there when the parties were taking place. Um, mm-hmm. And I didn't have, you know, I, I know a lot of friends who went out Thursday nights because Friday would be, they had been having classes. But unfortunately for me, I had classes booked every single day. So it's not like I could have partied in the weekdays either. Mm-hmm. But the second thing was, I think I ended up becoming more of like that designated driver. But because you're not really driving anywhere, I was more like that designated walker. So I was like the always the guy that was out there trying to make sure that no one got hurt or anything like that. For example, like I remember I, there's a funny like funny story. So, so here's like story time for me. So there was this there's this person that I saw in like when she was walking around the dorm like like drunk, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, like and she's she's about to like, go on the staircase. I was like, no, you're not going on a staircase because I know if you go down there, you're probably gonna trip and it's not gonna be the best of anything at all. So. I don't want to be like the guy who's like a witness here and then they're going to think I committed a murder. So I'm not letting you do that. So I literally remember giving this person like a piggyback ride up the stairs just to make sure they got to their dorm room okay. And it was like, mm-hmm. like that's the kind of person I was because I knew how dangerous it was doing those kind of things. I mean, we talk about like, you know, they'll talk about roofing drinks or like, you know, getting heavily intoxicated, peer pressure, all like that. And for the most part, I don't think I've ever really suffered with that so much. I know what limitations are and like not to engage in it. So I feel like, yeah, I really always became that quote unquote designated walker. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. I was always making sure people were okay. Like I remember there's also another time I had a friend coming back from, from a party, but I wasn't here. I was back home. So, mm-hmm. and she was walking back home alone at night. I was like, okay, there's no way I'm going to let you walk back home alone at night. So I had, I, I was trying That's to see if there's a friend. Yeah. But yeah. I guess no one was there. So, like, I remember I told her to video call me just so I can make sure that everything was okay on her way back. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that. Like, I think, you know, going back to parties, like, yeah, it's important to have, you want to have fun in uh, college. Don't get me wrong. It's like, at least do it once so you have the experience so you can understand what it's like. But it's mm-hmm. like, you have, you have to be really careful with it because it gets, it can get kind of scary. Um, sure. You see people pass out, like, and blackout and just get drunk all the time or it'll just, like, puke all over. I mean, I would I and that was the one thing that when I saw it on like movies that I didn't realize I was actually gonna see. Um, mm-hmm. So I felt like I experienced the the worst of what I saw. But yeah. yeah, that was kind of I guess the partying culture for me. So I guess to kind of explain like what blacking out means is basically means you don't remember anything from the night because of intoxication. I like because before going into college I didn't know any of these terms, and then like because like the level that people usually say you want to be at would be like just tipsy so like a bit more loose and like still coherent and like aware like you you know what choices you're making still but like a bit more reckless than normal and then it gets worse and worse until like the more the more you take then the closer to not remembering anything and that's what they call blacking out yeah yeah like you were talking about go ahead no no, go 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 go, official first oh like you're talking about parties parties i've actually never been to a real party the only things i've been to are just like kickbacks where um everyone who's there is friends with someone else there but like usually like just like smaller areas because um I joined a club and like like a social org and they would do those kind of things so because I was kind of close to the people I knew who were there with me and then everyone's like close friends with everyone else then I felt really like in a good safe environment I didn't have to worry about like my drinks getting roofied or like any sort of thing because if something like that were to happen then like those like that people those people wouldn't be invited to the gathering or whatever it was, but yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, it's just, it's not fun, I guess. I mean, obviously, like I said, have fun if you want to drink and drink, just be careful. And yeah, don't, because if you get to the point where you're blacking out, that's really not fun at all, because I, like, you want to get to the point where, yeah, like, like Ellie said, tipsy. I don't know how to define it. I remember, I remember when I was, like, piggyback hearing that one person they kept tugging on my hair the entire time like literally going like that I was like oh oh my gosh it's over I knew it um this is not I did not expect to be doing this at one in the morning but um 
yeah, so just be careful because you don't want to have to wake up the next day and not realize what you did the last night, especially if it's like if something bad happened too. That would be terrible for it. I mean, yeah, you just have to be careful, know who you're with and make sure they're trustworthy and that they're actually good people because you don't know what could happen. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. All right, let's move on to a, a more happier conversation. Actually, I don't even know. I, this, this might get worse. But I was thinking of like talking about because um, we, we we briefly mentioned how classes were so condensed. Like you, there's so much information you could take from just 50 minutes, right? Yeah. But I wanted to touch up on what we think about the difficulty of classes from high school versus college. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, fair warning, all of us here are step. So that's something I think we need to consider because technically. I would say psychology isn't really considered that STEM. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt for today. <laughs> but for and the most like, part... Mm -hmm. the, the sciences that we take are, are considered like under non-science major sciences. So like the, the chemistry that I took wasn't like the chemistry that my pre, all my pre-med friends are taking and given basically all my friends who are not like engineering or CS, they're probably pre-med. <laughs> Just like how it is at UCSD, but yeah, we'll like the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> it's like a easier science classes, yeah. yeah. Anyways, moving yeah. on from that, uh, continuing from the disclaimer. Um, so obviously, like, because like I think we I mentioned, for example, for me, I was told that oh, things would be easier, you know, like everyone told me life would be great. You don't have to study as hard. There's not much homework. And then I realized I asked all the business kids what life was like. I didn't bother to ask any of my science friends who were going to college already. So, mm -hmm. at least for you guys, what was what was the difficulty like? For, you know, comparing the two, and if it and how did how were you able to like transition into it? So for me, of course, each since yeah, talking about STEM classes like chemistry and biology. Going back, it was difficult in terms of that you are learning more stuff you did in high school. So there's that as well as how in each class, it's at a lot faster pace compared to high school. So the information, like if you took AP Bio or AP Chem, you'll still go through the same, like all of the same materials. However, there'll be more stuff you'll be learning as well as it's going fast in terms of like if you were took like I know in high school one unit I think was two chapters for me and that took like a month but now in college I remember learning biology going through like no wait no yeah going through like evolution and stuff and then going straight to physiology I learned so and then not in that pack with so much details it's just that all the information and the speed is just makes it so much more difficult than high school. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, when it comes to like the grading scale and like probably for every school, every college out there, a lot of the times they're based on a curve and their tests are extremely difficult. Yeah. Because, you know, when it comes to, I don't know why they make it so difficult, but for us pre-mids, it's kind of like you want to make sure you get like the top of the top to get into med school and, you know, the prestige and whatever. So not only was the material like a lot and fast, but the tests were extremely hard in terms of you cannot just procrastinate like what a lot of people did in high school, you know. Oh yeah, I'll just look over my notes real quick the night before and then cram mm -hmm. right before the test and then do, you know, well. Here you actually mm -hmm. have to take time, like a couple of days before, maybe even a week, to go through all the materials that you learn and then hopefully do the best you can in the test and be above the curve. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, just speaking on that too, because like I, I I went to I mean, came from a, coming from like a pretty competitive high school that was like already like academically it was challenging right so I think you know going to college for me it, it would it, I think it depended on the class so GE classes 
relatively pretty easy and they were like what I was used to, if not easier. So I didn't have to worry about GE classes. I just took notes, took the exams, wrote some papers. Pretty fair, pretty simple. Um, I mean, I took like Spanish, but I was pretty fluent in it. So Spanish wasn't too bad to kind of just get the requirement over with. Writing, writing wasn't too bad too. Cause I mean, it was just writing like four essays throughout a semester. So not the end of the world either. When it came to science classes, because obviously since I am a science major, um, I think it varied on the class. For example, I took AP bio in high school. And I mean, bio was my favorite subject. That hence why I went into human biology. So bio classes were not, not, not going to say that they were the easiest, but I enjoyed it a lot more. And like, it was easy to take. So even though the content may have been challenging because I was so interested in learning about it, it got quote unquote easier because it's like you enjoyed learning it. So the pain of like thinking that, Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. It's so hard. doesn't really hit you. Chemistry on the other hand, that's a whole nother story. So high school, I never, I never took AP chem, never took chem honors, didn't take chemistry during the regular school year. In fact, the only experience I have in chem was taking chem over the summer because I just wanted to get rid of it in high school. So when I came into um, college chemistry, I was sitting in a room where literally every kid I talked to took AP chem. And I'm sitting here like, oh, I'm screwed. Like, I'm screwed. Everyone here knows what they're doing. Like, they all got fives on the exams. I was like, I literally had to work for it. So I say this a lot, but I tell when, I, when people ask me how, what was like, what was my academic life like freshman year, I guess first semester at the very least, I probably committed 80% of all my academic studying time to just chemistry because it was so bad. And I, I really do think that if you prepare yourself well in high school, it, it, you'll be better in college. But because I didn't have the best preparation for chemistry, I had to work for that class. Like I did so many practice problems, like looked at lecture notes almost every day just to figure things out. Then lab itself was already bad. And I was trying to figure out how to cor how labs is correlating to the lecture. So I think difficulty wise, I mean, classes overall, it really just depended on what I was taking. And also kind of like, if you have prior knowledge in that subject, it makes it so much easier. Like bio mm -hmm. was made so much easier for me because I knew a lot of like the cell bio physio stuff they were talking about. Evolutionary bio, same thing. But chemistry, I'm not gonna lie. Once we started doing like titrations, I was like, they're all like, oh, who here has done a titration? And I see the whole class raise their hand. And I'm like, what? I was, I, when they said titration, I was thinking of like a trident, like the thing that uh, Poseidon uses. Like I was legit confused. Like, what are you talking about? You tritation? mean, like, like, mascot? Yeah, I was literally thinking of Essie's mascot when the guy was like, oh, so we're going to be, we're going to be testing like acid and bases and we're going to be doing titrations. And the, I think whoever the professor was like, how many of you guys have done titrations? Literally everyone raised their hand and I'm sitting here. I'm like, what, what is he talking about? What, what, like, isn't the trident the sword thingy? And I was, like, I was sitting there confused. So like, every, and it, I think it also relates to like lab skills because everyone has done it in high school or like some variation of it. Like they knew how to titrate. Like for me, I was literally just going like spin, 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 spin. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to measure this thing. So I think, you know, it really, yeah, it just really depended on the class and also just the prior preparation I had going into it. Mm -hmm. I guess for me as a psychology major, well, a lot of first year I spent taking like lower division GE classes at UCSD. They separate, like the classes you'd have to take are based off your major requirements and like your college GE requirements. So it's like an overlap of both. So a lot of it, a lot of what I was taking was just like diverse, regular GE stuff, different things that requirements and all. I'd say the humanities sections, there's a lot of reading. But personally for me, academically, I'd say like, it just depends on how much pressure you put on yourself to do well and how, what you want your grades to be. Because if you want to get all A's, no A minuses, and while doing four classes, like in high school, we did like six, six classes or like five classes and like a team sport or whatever. It seems so much easier than it is just taking four classes or even three classes at like college level, just because just four classes takes up so much time. If you're taking like a humanities course or something and 
they assign you like 80 pages of reading per week like you have to actually know the reading and stuff to actually be able to write and engage in class and be able to understand what the professor's like referring to in lectures and like that kind of thing you have to do your work to keep up so like it just really depends on what you want your grades to be i feel like and also the uc system they rank the or like the grading scale is based off like 93 or something is still an a minus i think 94 is an a and a minus is don't count as like a 4.0 so it's like a 3.8 something so like it's it's what you want your GPA to be and what your aspirations are after undergrad and how like your performance should be based off that yeah so like I have a few friends who just take three classes a quarter and that's it and if that is the best way for you to do well in your classes and actually get higher grades like don't worry about trying to take more classes and like feel if you see other people taking more classes than you are like don't feel bad because at the end of the day your gpa is what you want it to be and if you need something higher in order for undergrad or something or like if your priorities are graduating in three years and you want to uh get them over with whatever like it's all on you and what you want it to be yeah nice so. <laughs> awesome. and just like a note to anyone who's watching this i had oh yeah this i guess is like another expectation thing but i remember people will be telling me it's like oh yeah since i'm not good at writing so english is not my strong point so then people will be telling me it's like oh yeah once you get to college, you don't have to care about all the stuff that has not related to, like, you know, medicine. He's like, but yeah, you don't have, you don't care about writing anymore. Just focus on, focus on the science is what you like. And yeah, that's definitely not true. Since yeah, I, I know every college has GEs, general education requirements, and they're very diverse where you have to include, like, I know we have, like, we have to go do some humanity classes. You know we have we have to have a writing class and like a bunch of other classes and even if you're not a stem major you're a humanities major you are most likely going to take stem classes as part of your ge because i know that i think all of us have to take calculus right or pre-calculus and we also oh shoot did it freeze oh you're good, oh, you're good. Oh, okay so yeah pre-calculus and then some of us go like yeah if in high school like, why would we learn a language if we're never going to be fully fluent in it? So that was also no expectation. But then, of course, coming to college, a lot of the places you go to will require a language. So, yeah, just make sure that don't come into college thinking that you can forget whatever, like, whatever history you learned or, like, your writing skills. Don't think it's insignificant because in college, you're going to do it again. And there's a reason why they have them in college. And so you know them, you know how to write well, you know a little bit of history, and then you just, you know, be a more well-rounded person because in the end, it's going to help you in life. Yeah, pretty good. And I think, you know, just kind of go off for that. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, it makes sense because, you know, honestly, realistically, even though people are like, yeah, you, you can study whatever you want and finally be like, like, yeah, you can finally study what you're passionate about. The truth of reality is you're going to be going back to the basics, math, English. So they have like, you're going to at least have to take a class or two in those fields because it's going to be required for a GE. So I think that's something that's been kind of misperceived among everyone, thinking that you can just do sciences or just do like business when in reality you have other things to do as well. But I guess to kind of wrap up this thing, I would say, what do you think was, you know, what was like one of your first? And when I mean my first is like, Something that you find that like the for the first time ever in your life you did in college that you never did in high school like you know what I mean by first right like quote unquote you'd be like oh it could be your first drink or it could be like your first um, I know we all, we don't drink here because you know we're under twenty one we follow the rules but um, of course. but what, what was like like maybe like if you have a couple what was your like first in college like something you finally did for the first time in college. 
If you guys are thinking, I can go first. Okay. Go, ahead. go first. All right. I have two firsts. Um, one thing that I did for the first time was pull an all-nighter. I have never pulled an all-nighter in high school. I, I mean, I stayed up late, but I would always oh, get some. Same. Right? Wait, but but not until it. I got into college, I pulled an all-nighter. And not because I procrastinated, but I couldn't sleep this one night. It was really weird. The, like, the temperature in the room kept going up and down. I was laying down there. I was like, what the heck is going on? It's 3 in the morning. I'm like, screw it. I know I'm not going to wake up for my 8 a.m. if I keep doing this way. So I just, I just stayed up. I, I just watched YouTube for five hours straight until 8 oh, a.m. And I went to class. And it wasn't the first time I've done it. I've pulled, I think, a total of three all-nighters in just my freshman year of college. Like, three. Two of them, two of them because I couldn't sleep. And the third one being, I just stayed up with a friend really late because they needed to talk. But that was basically, the th like, I pulled three all-nighters. I've never done that in my life. It was, it's, a, it's an experience. Um, would I recommend trying it? No, but if you have to, it's a, something out there. But that was one thing. So in college was the first time I've ever pulled an all-nighter. The second thing that's happened to me for the first time ever was I got hit by an automobile, right? So I, did? I think David knows. Wait, David did knows, you get but, your but, tuition you know, paid for? That's what I'm thinking, right? But I didn't have the proof for it. So I was like really upset. But you know how everyone's always like, oh, you get hit by a campus bus or something like that. Free tuition, right? Like if, yeah. if you're not a kid who sees a bus and instantly think, oh, free tuition if I jump in front of that. Like that's what happened. Okay. <laughs> I didn't That's get hit what by everyone jokes about. <laughs> like, yeah, everyone jokes about it. Like, if you don't, you're low key not normal. But um, it's kind of sad that the, that college tuition and stuff like that has become such a joke that we think about this. But I didn't get hit by a full on bus. I got hit by a golf cart. Well, not a golf cart per se, but David might know. Like David, there's like those white little campus like we have not, 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 not the whole cart, but oh. like, it's like a little, like it's like a golf cart but a little bit larger, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got floored by one. So. <laughs> I was I was I was skating to the library or to or to my job. I don't I don't know which one, but I was skating somewhere, right? And I'm on my skateboard. Um, life is going great. I'm going forward. Not many people around me. It's a it's a good, nice afternoon. And all of a sudden, the side rear view mirror of this automobile, right, hits my back and like my lower part of it, and I literally like heated myself off the skateboard. Like I my skateboard flew that way. I flew that way. I hit the ground pretty freaking hard. Um, wasn't so bad. I, I just scraped my knee, um, and my left arm was a, a little bit achy. But, yeah, I got hit by one. And then the problem was I would think – you would think that the guy would have stopped and made sure I was okay. If he'd done that, I would have been perfectly fine. I, I don't know. I, I would question his driving skills. But I would have been perfectly fine. I was like, you know, I'm an understanding kind of guy. You didn't kill me. Let's talk this out. But he ran. Like, I, got, I was basically a hit and run. So, so the hit and run happened. And then it just, I don't know, I'm going off a tangent now. But then I called the health center because I, don't, I didn't think my right arm was broken. Like it was throbbing. I, pre, I just figured it was bruised. But I wanted to get it checked. So I called and I was like, hey, can I schedule like a walk in appointment? And they said, oh, sorry, we can't take you in because it's flu season right now. I'm like, Bruh. oh, okay, let, let me go ahead and get, and let, and get shot and let me come back to you and let's see, let's see if I still have to get weight. <laughs> I still have to wait in line for this. Like, I don't know. But all in all, I was okay. Should have. Went for free tuition if I could have or something like that. Figured it out. But and now I can have the experience of saying that I got floored by a campus uh, um, automobile and then um, I, I made it out. Um, but yeah, so all-nighters and that's experience. I don't know if either is an experience I would have wanted to have, but I have them. Mm. What about you, David? What was your – something you've done for the first – something that's happened to you for the first time or something you've done for the first time? Mm, for the first time was just me purposely skipping in class because I was tired or sometimes just yeah since you know I slept like three four in the morning since at night I could you know go to the library and grind and get away from all the distractions so then sometimes I'll wake up I have like a 9 a.m class 9 a.m bio class or even a 10 a.m chemistry class and I'm like I'll just wake up 8 30 sit on my bed like hmm like no one's taking attendance and no one really cares i can just watch the recording later so you know and then i'll just i'll just you know just skip it sleep until like 11 12 and be like okay time to get you know start with the day yeah that was definitely a first well you ellie i guess also first for me i'd never pulled an all-nighter in high school first time pulling one in college but 
it was a lot better than yours both times. I, I've done it twice. Both times I've done it were just for social purposes. Like, I had a good day. I went to a concert with some friends. We talked for, like, hours after. And then we just, like, stayed up talking a lot. And then we hit, like, the post-concert depression area. And then we kind of just turned it into a deep conversation. And then it was, like, 4 a.m. And then our other friend came back from a kickback. And then we were like, sun's coming up in an hour why don't we walk to the beach and see the sunrise so we did that and then we realized the sun rising the sun would rise behind us so we walked to the beach and was like looking backwards and then we just like sat there for a while looking at the waves i don't know why i wasn't tired that night or like in the a.m that time we got back to the dorm and i was hungry and then the dining hall opened and I bought a bagel. <laughs> it was just a good time. See, I would rather have had my first old letter be a good time, not me struggling to sleep because the temperature in the room for some reason feels like it's fluctuating every 20 seconds. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So yeah, mm -hmm. going back to our original topic of like expectation versus reality, you know, like one big expectation I had for college was that like the freedoms from not being around family and like being able to dictate my own life like that for sure was there for me um we had an RA but she didn't really she just like checked in make sure we were okay it wasn't like reinforced much we pretty much had all the freedom but yeah like as a college student, you really can do anything you want whenever you want. You reap yeah. the consequences. Like, mm -hmm. it's on you, bud. So true. <laughs> yeah. I'm running off an all-nighter right now, all right? You guys can see me drinking my second <laughs> cup of coffee. Like, literally, I, like, ever since college happened, I had all those things. I started pulling more. Ah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, and, though, no, yeah. I learned that coffee can really get you through it. Like, after that all-nighter, I slept at, eight, like, 9 in the morning that day. And then I slept until, like, 1 or 2 p.m., something like that. My friends and I went to a coffee shop afterwards, did homework for, like, seven hours, studied and stuff, came back, played some basketball with some friends, <laughs> went back to the dorm, like, fell asleep next day, 8 a.m. I think I just got lucky that, like, the night I pulled an all-nighter was, like, so, like, a weekend. Sometimes when you, like, go out and, like, have social life and stuff, kickbacks and stuff, they do happen more so on the weekend, so it works out that way. But scheduling your homework time, time management is important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Kind of, or David, do you want to go first before I make co closing remarks? Yeah, so I was just going to say that I had, like, I, yeah, it was... Definitely also a first time for me having all-nighters in college. But I was like, I kind of had like what both of you had experienced where there are some all-nighters I did just to, you know, socialize and have fun, yeah. which was, yes, there's consequences. But then there was also another first was I did, I had an all-nighter simply because I couldn't sleep, but it was because I was extremely anxious about a test. Ooh. And this is like the first test for the second semester. Since, you know, first semester didn't go too well, so I really want to get a really good grade. So, like, two nights, but yeah, no, yeah, two nights before a test, I was just sitting there. I was like, okay, I'm going to sleep early. I have to fix my time, you know, my wake-up time so I can go to my 8 a.m. test, which fortunately was not 8 a.m. because stuff changed. But it's just like, I was just sitting on my bed, just kept thinking, it's like, I, why can't I not sleep? And then I kept thinking about the test and just... It was like five and six in the morning. I was like, dang, I didn't even sleep. So yeah. yeah. That's rough. Yeah, that was definitely the first. Like talking about um sacrificing sleep for social life. I remember like a remark that one of my history teachers made um winter quarter. He was like, You learn the most from your college experience, not in like the lecture halls that you sit in from your professor but from the 3 a.m. talks you have 
with your sweet mate like after you're done laundry because you haven't done it in three weeks and you're just like there talking and you're like eh, it's a vibe you know but as long as I, I think even though some people think like oh it might be a bad decision like oh you stayed up late or stuff like that quite honestly you know staying up late just to talk to a friend or being there for someone or making those mistakes like those mistakes of procrastinating i think they are important to have an experience because then mm -hmm. You know, you grow from it. You at least learn learn it while you still can before it gets like really, really bad. Um, because you don't want to be having that habit throughout all of college. You want to like, you know, you look if you suffer grades in first semester or freshman year, that's fine because everyone's adjusting too. That's the truth yeah. of the situation. That that idea of getting a perfect four point I think we can obviously just say just throw it out the window. Like, be realistic with mm -hmm. yourself. You want to enjoy and balance everything. So if you have to go to the point where you're staying up till three a.m. just to talk to someone or something like that, you know, those are worth it moments. You think that oh great now i'm gonna oversleep or something like that like look school education learning that's always gonna be there but being able to make those moments with your friends that's something that it's yeah. irreplaceable school yeah. school can always school school will always be there for you to fall back on and study like if you need to mm -hmm. self-learn it's great you can self-learn it but having those deep talk with your friends that's not something you can just do like on yeah. a random spontaneous basis that's something that like in the moment you're like all right Let's do this. But, you know, glad we close this off on a wholesome vibe. No longer any scary things. But anyways, thanks, th uh, thanks, David and Ellie, coming, obviously, talking about this stuff. And for everyone listening, hope you guys are staying safe, doing well. And, yeah, we will see you in the next uh, podcast. Bye. Bye.